2018 edition of Capital Tiger Bay Club. And speaking of city politics, I see Senator Montfort's here today. And he has announced that he's going to stay put and not run for mayor. Those cheerful screams you heard out in the hallway earlier, that was Curtis Richardson. He's doing his happy dance. <laughs> Our guest today is the former Miami Bay Beach Mayor, Philip Levine, and he is running for the governor of our great state. He's running on, on a campaign built on what any good Jew, Jewish boy should be, his mother's endorsement and a lot of money. <laughs> Mr. Levine leads the Democratic field in fundraising. He's raised nearly six million, almost half of that, from himself. He says he's very comfortable putting 50 million of his own money toward the campaign. Which begs me to ask the question, Mr. Mayor, are you single? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, with that kind of money, unless Alec Baldwin and George Soros start writing bigger checks, you might want to say good night. Mr. Gillum. Hmm. Kenneth Levine is, of course, campaigning throughout the state, and as he does so, he has to recreate himself. In Miami and Brevard County, excuse me, Miami and Broward counties, he's mostly just Philip Levine. However, in little area, in areas like Little Havana, Havana, he will slightly mispronounce his name as Lavine. <laughs> As he stumps in Central Florida among the newly arrived immigrant, immigrant population, he likes to be introduced as Senor Felipe Levin. <laughs> <laughs> and in our part of the state, and heading west into Calhoun and Jackson counties, he says, just call me Philip Bubba Levine. <laughs> the bar mitzvah? Well, now that's just my ranch. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Philip Bubba Levine. Ah, right. First of all, I gotta tell you, the first two introductions were good, but the third one was great. <laughs> so thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. And I gotta tell you, the funniest thing is, we ran our first TV commercial, and I had my mom on there, as you saw, all over the state. My mom's head got so big, okay? And I was so concerned, I said, you know, I was always concerned my boxer dog Earl would run against me because he's so popular. I'm concerned about her running against me. <laughs> because especially in her condominium, where uh, she's definitely the most popular person around these days. So I'm honored to be here at Tiger Bay. It's, I think it's my third Tiger Bay. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's fantastic to be here with all of you. And I, I was gonna tell you a little about myself, try not to bore you, and then uh, tell you why I'm running for governor. And then of course, Ask me any questions you want, which I know you're going to do anyways, okay? And I mean any questions, because I'm an open book, uh, and uh, I'm happy to answer anything. But uh, my, my background's a little different. I grew up in Boston as a little boy, uh, moved down to South Florida when I was 10 years old, and took my parents with me, of course. And uh, I uh, grew up in a little town called Hollywood, and went to public school, and I uh, was one of those kids that did every job you could possibly imagine. From scooping ice cream at Baskin Robbins to washing dishes to washing cars to parking cars, and I actually think I washed more cars in Broward County than ever human being ever did. Okay, and I was just one of those kids, like working, 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 and uh, went to college, U of M, uh, University of Michigan. Okay, <laughs> and uh, I uh, majored in political science. Never thought in a million years I'd ever use that degree. Finally, I've used it later in life. Thank God. Never thought I would. And I came back to South Florida. Had no idea what I wanted to do. I just, I didn't have a family business to go into. Uh, tried a few different jobs, hated everything. And uh, I thought, oh, what am I gonna do? I answered an ad in the Miami Herald. Um, remember the days when you actually look at the newspaper for a job, okay? Well, that's what I did. And this little company called Royal Caribbean was looking for someone to come on board their ships. And it was a little company in those days, like three ships, to come on board their ship and give lectures about the ports of call. So I went down to the human resource office, and uh, I think I was like 23, and uh, I said, I'm the guy, I can do it, I'm a great public speaker. And they said, well, how much public speaking experience do you have? I said, oh, I'm, I'm years, I'm amazing. Thank God they did no due diligence, and there was no internet, okay, and they hired me for the job. Next thing you know, I don't know if some of you have been on cruises before, but uh, 
I was on this cruise ship called the Song of America, and uh, they gave me my cabin. It was below the water line. It had no porthole and no bathroom. And I thought, I have made the worst decision of my life. This is career suicide at 23. How do I get off this cruise ship? I was terrified. I'm scared to death. So I thought, I don't know, maybe I'll call the Coast Guard. Maybe the Coast Guard gets you off cruise ships. I have no idea. And I had like $500 to my name. So I don't even know what the Coast Guard charges to get you off a cruise ship. So I, I thought, oh, God, I'll get through this. I'll go to sleep the next day. I'm out in the middle of the ocean. And I'm going to give this lecture. I thought, you know, there'll be 50, 60 cruise passengers. I'll get through it. And then I'll get off. And I, I get to this lounge called the Oklahoma Lounge. And I walk in, and it's a thousand cruise passengers, standing room only. And I'm thinking, I'm going to die. This is, this is the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. And by the way, the cruise director, you know, he's one of these guys, you know, it's like Roger Moore meets Sean Connery. He's like James Bond. And, uh, and he's British, and he says, ladies and gentlemen, we have one of the greatest speakers ever in the history of Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines on board this week. And I'm thinking, it, he, he can't be talking about me. God forbid. And so I went up there, and I started to talk, and my arms were frozen to my side. And uh, little by little, my arms started to disengage. People started to listen. I told a couple of jokes. And for me, that was the beginning of the rest of my life. I fell into this great industry called the cruise ship industry and spent time working on board ships, got off, uh, moved to Miami Beach, and uh, with $500 and a pocket full of dreams, I started a little company. Uh, that little company became a big company, and I was fortunate enough to sell that company. And I decided that uh, I wanted to help my community, and I wanted to give back. And I thought, I'm going to run for mayor. And, uh, and by the way, some of you have never run for office, I recommend it to all of you, okay? <laughs> it's kind of like being on that show Survivor. Okay? And uh, you're one of the contestants. And uh, everyone said when I ran for mayor, everybody said, there's no way this guy can win. I mean, he's a self-made entrepreneur. He's got no name ID. And by the way, 50% of the city is Hispanic. How's this guy going to win? What they didn't realize is, Puerto Blas Español fluentemente. So I speak Spanish fluently. And of course, uh, that was a shock to a few of my opponents. And, um, and what I did is I went right to the people. Uh, you know all those gorgeous condominium buildings in Miami Beach you see on the water? I broke into every single one of them, okay? I did. I literally, I'd evade security, I'd go to the top, and I would begin knocking on doors. And I knocked on 6,000 doors. And by the way, I learned real quick, do not use those elevators. They have security cameras. If you use those elevators, you'll get thrown out so fast you won't believe it. So I would take the stairwells down. And I was wearing my Nike Air Maxes and my shirt that said Levine for mayor. And, and uh, by the way, if you ever wondered whether you could blow out a pair of Nike Air Maxes, I actually blew one out because I walked so long, so hard. And when I went house to house, I think I ate more white flies you could ever imagine, okay? And I did it. I went right to the people. And as you know, one of our great threats in Miami Beach, and a threat that's facing 79% of Florida's coastlines, is sea level rise due to climate change. And I said, if I become mayor, I'm going to attack this problem. Uh, the one thing I won't do is nothing. I said, because people that know me know how impatient I am. I'm so impatient, I'm a very impatient person. And I said, uh, I, I'm gonna attack it, we're gonna come up with answers. So I ran this TV commercial, uh, showed you down one of our main roads on Miami Beach, underwater, and I had a, a kayak, and I'm paddling down one of our roads. And I said to camera, I said, uh, some people wanna be the mayor of Venice, I wanna be the mayor of Miami Beach. And I had my boxer dog, Earl, with me. He's on the kayak, and the water's pouring down his head. And I turned to Earl, and I said, Earl, paddle, Earl, paddle. And he looked up at the camera and he cried. The perfect moment. We caught it on tape and we made that our TV commercial. And, uh, and lo and behold, even though the media said this guy's got no shot, the four people in the race, I won in a landslide with over 50% of the vote. Now, of course, my dog Earl thinks he got me elected, okay? <laughs> I don't believe it. Uh, but, uh, and I became mayor. And we did a lot of things. Uh, people said, my God, he is the most impatient mayor we've ever had. And I said, I rear that as a badge of honor. Uh, because one thing we need to get started on right away with climate change due to sea level rise. We had to figure, how are we gonna do this? And I said, folks, this is like we got attacked in Pearl Harbor, okay? We must move, we must go fast, because the people of Miami Beach and Miami are watching, the world's watching. We have billions of dollars worth of real estate, we have people's lives at stake, their future, their livelihoods, let's get something going. So we started raising roads, putting in pumps, raising our seawalls, changing our building codes, and by the way, saying on Miami Beach, if you want solar panels, we're giving you the height right away, you can put your solar panels on. Because the one thing we know in the sunshine state is that we're not the probably cloudy state. And we need to make sure that we harness solar energy. So we started doing it on Miami Beach right away. Uh, a great thing we did that we're very proud of 
is um, we raised the minimum living wage in Miami Beach, and we're the first and only city to ever do it in the state of Florida. And I can tell you that, um, thank you. We did it because it's the right thing to do, because we know people can't live on $8.25 an hour. As a matter of fact, I gotta tell you, I go to Tiger Bay clubs in Republican lying areas. And when I talk to my Republican friends, I'll say it very clearly. This minimum living wage, it's a Republican issue. It's not a Democratic issue. And of course, my Republican friends will look at me like I have three heads. And I'll say, let me explain why. If we all know you can't live on $8.25 an hour, how do you think people are living? They're living because the government is helping subsidize them through welfare programs, social programs. So basically, the taxpayers are actually paying for it. And the one thing I know is I don't know my, my Republican friends don't really like subsidizing anyone's business. But that's actually what we're doing. So in Miami Beach, we took the move. By the way, when we raised it, I never realized how many as entities we could be sued by. We're being sued by the governor, the state of Florida, the retail federation, but we are very excited because we believe it's going to the Florida Supreme Court this year, and we're going to win. And that's how we believe in Miami Beach, and we know it's the right thing to do. So we reformed our police department uh, before I became mayor. Uh, unfortunately, we had a tragic incident where uh, an African-American male was shot over a hundred something times in his car during our Memorial Day weekend, which is uh, an African-American weekend in Miami Beach. And I said, if I become mayor, I will reform the police department. And I can tell you, when you say that, you do not get the police endorsement. And I did not. <laughs> uh, but what I did do is I won. And I said, we're going to get started. We did a national search, and we found one of the greatest police chiefs in America by the name of Dan Oates. Uh, he was a chief during the Aurora, Colorado, horrible Batman theater shooting, where President Obama said one of the best chiefs in America. We brought him to Miami Beach. And then we went out, and we recruited an African-American woman by the name of Loretta Hill, and we made her the deputy chief of our police department, and she became the highest-ranking African-American and woman in the history of our police department. We also changed our majors, our captains. We put body cameras on our police before Ferguson, and we did a lot of things to reform our police department. You know, I go on and on. We built a convention center. We did a lot of stuff. And I ran again and became mayor, second term. And everyone said, you got to run for a third term. Why not? You won't even have an opponent. You just walk in. And I said, I'm not doing that. I said, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I had a plan and a vision. Every single thing I've said we're going to do, we've done it. And if it's not totally complete, it's in process. And I know it's hard for hearing that from someone who's in politics. That usually doesn't happen. But that's what we did. I said, I'm going to run for governor. And I've been all over the state of Florida. I've been everywhere. Uh, from, from the panhandle to the Keys, nonstop. We announced my governorship run on November 1st. Uh, and of course, uh, I'm a Democrat, but as I tell everyone, before I'm a Democrat, I'm an American. And I don't believe that anyone has a monopoly of good ideas, not Republicans, not Democrats, and not independents. I'm not right, and I'm not left. I'm forward. I'm pro-people, and I'm pro-business. That's a journey of my life. I believe in the American dream. I started from nothing, and I built what I built on my own. And I believe that the American dream and the Florida dream are the same. But what we need to make sure of is that everyone has the opportunity to live that dream, whatever it is. I don't care if you want to be a teacher, you want to be a technician, uh, whatever it is that you want to do in your life, we need to make sure of that. Now, there are those that come up to me all the time and they'll say, uh, Mayor, you're a Democrat. How can you be like pro-business? How does that, doesn't make a lot of sense. And I say, well, let me explain to you how. If you look at the HR manual of the most admired companies in America, you know all those companies we kind of want to bring to Florida, like Amazon and eBay and Apple and Boeing and Lockheed and GE and all the rest of them? You're going to notice they're all very similar. They're pro-education, they're pro-health care, they're anti-discrimination, uh, they they're, they're definitely in favor of environmental policy, which is sound, and they also they are going to relocate anywhere they want public transportation. I said, so reasons why do they do that they do it for purely selfish reasons they do it because they learned that if you take care of your people your people will take care of you and the organization will prosper so my vision for Florida is to do the same to take care of our people to take care of what I call team Florida to invest in education make sure everybody has health care make sure we have the toughest strongest non-discrimination policies in the country make sure we have great environmental policies and the key, of course, is that if we act like them, it's like field of dreams. Build it and they shall come. Uh, I'm sorry to say that uh, the governor and I disagree on many things. Uh, the governor feels that if you have low wages and low taxes and great weather, wow, all these great companies are going to beat your door down to get to you. 
Well, if that's the case, how come Haiti hasn't done so well, okay? I come from a town called Boston, a state called Massachusetts. As a matter of fact, unfortunately, their taxes are high. Fortunately, their wages are very high. And I can tell you, their weather is terrible, okay? <laughs> but you know what they have? They have every great company going there and starting there. And the reason they do is because they have the best education in the country. And they have the best public transportation. And they have developed a culture of excellence in Massachusetts. And that's why they are and where they are today going forward. To me, we do not model ourselves after our governments. We need to look at the opportunities uh, with some of these great admired organizations and start acting a little more like them. During this horrible gun tragedy, that we experienced. And I went to high school in Broward County as a parent, and a lot of you are. Uh, it was tragic for our state, for our country. Uh, we know what we need to do, but unfortunately it wasn't done up here in this town. But what's interesting is how corporate America said, we, we really don't care about your backward ways up here in your government. We're actually going to do the right thing, whether it was Delta or Dick's Sporting Goods or some of these other companies. They said, we don't know what century you are operating in, but we're kind of listening to our customers, and our customers are telling us that this is what they want. So my vision for the state of Florida is truly to listen to the people, put people first in the state of Florida. And if we do that moving forward, it is my belief that we will become a 21st century economy where your kids, by the way, won't have to leave the state of Florida to actually get a good job. They can actually stay in Florida and grow in Florida and prosper in Florida. And that's why I'm running for governor. Uh, you know, I gotta tell you, uh, there are folks that say, uh, Jesus, Mr. Mayor, how can a Miami Beach Jewish Democrat win statewide? I don't see it in a million years. And I laugh. I laugh, I laugh, laugh. I said, matter of fact, um, I knew this African American guy. You won't believe this story. He ran up in Northern Florida a couple times. Craziest thing. He actually won the state and became president of the United States of America, okay? And I knew this old Jewish guy, crazy, even crazier. Yes, he almost got the Democratic nomination for president. I said, we run a 67 county strategy. There's nowhere we won't go. There's no one I won't talk to. I don't care if a county has five registered Democrats. I show up. I go there to talk to them. Because it's really about everybody in the state of Florida. But I can tell you one thing. Uh, as much as we're everywhere, uh, we happen to come from an area where, thank God, the majority of the population happens to live. It's called South Florida, okay? All right, and number two, that's where the majority of Democrats live. And number three, I said, we have a lot of people in our state that speak this other language called Spanish. I happen to speak it fluently. Uh, and of course, uh, I know that uh, it's a big state, but the one thing I do know is everywhere I go, everybody wants the same thing. They want clean water, they want better education, they want safe schools. They want better public transportation. They want non-discrimination policies. And my God, they want better jobs, higher paying jobs. And that's what kind of brings us together. So I believe that Florida has been the butt of many jokes for many years. We may have led the country in possibly the wrong direction, but I believe this year will be our opportunity to set the record straight and to show the country and the world that we're gonna do the right thing and I believe that this election forward this year, not only the most important election in our state, it's not only the most important election in the country, this election this year in Florida is the most important election of the world because so goes Florida this year, so goes the presidency in 2020. So thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you. Right? <laughs>